Good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Samo Highlights. Here to bring you the news on all things Samo High, I'm Max Gumble, And I'm Natasha Munasinga. Tonight's episode includes Cowlett teacher Miss Gasparino, a look at the Day of the Dead art exhibit, Color Guard, and more. <laughs> We start off the program tonight with a special interview with Rachel Thies, Captain of Color Guard, and Sophie Horwitz Hirsch, the marching band drum major. Welcome you guys to the show. Thanks, Thanks for having, having us. us. Thanks. So uh, Rachel, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what Color Guard does? Well, Color Guard is a section of the marching band and we kind of take care of the more visual aspect of it. We have a co-ed team and basically we learn, how, learn different choreography with spinning flags, rifles, and sabers, and even dance. Is Are there any training that goes with that? Um, over the summer, there's a two weeks of marching band camp, and that comes from noon to eight, and that's where like all the new people learn the basics and choreography. Just to clarify, so the rifles aren't loaded? <laughs> <laughs> no, they aren't. They're so like wooden rifles. All right, but is it, it still sounds like a pretty dangerous thing, throwing up wooden sticks all over Yeah, place. it can be, especially if it's windy, and especially if no one's actually paying attention. Has anybody ever suffered a, been put on the designated list? After <laughs> a, a <laughs> There's a few rifle? people, including me, but like... <laughs> 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 Wait, do you guys want to share any fatalities? Well, we understand if you don't. It can be a little embarrassing, I'm sure. Well, I'll share my friends. So basically, <laughs> when she was learning how to spin flag, she was tossing it in the air. And then she basically hit her head, and she ended up having like a huge bump right here for an uh. like entire week. <sighs> that one's got to hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so Sophie, uh, you are the drum major in the marching yes. band, correct? What does that mean? Okay, so actually, I do not play drums like a lot of people think. Um, I'm the conductor of the marching band, so I'm basically the link between the band director and the students. So I'm in charge of giving directions. I call the band to attention. I'm on the podium conducting. I keep time. Um, if something goes wrong while I'm on the podium, I have to think really fast to try and correct it. Um, long story short, my job is a lot of yelling and waving my <laughs> arms around. So yeah, that's what I do. And you guys uh, just won a big competition, am I right? Yeah, on October 26th, I believe, we went to Baldwin Park High School and competed in the field show tournament. And we actually came on top first out of all divisions, which was it was amazing. Um, I actually left the field and I couldn't carry all the trophies. I had to have <laughs> Rachel help me. Um, but yeah, it was really nice knowing all our hard work paid off and it was pretty cool. It's really great. Do you guys have any more competitions coming up? Um, well, right now we just finished our second competition and we have three more to go, including championships if we make it. So how did you guys get involved with marching band in the first place? Um, I joined marching band freshman year on the clarinet, and then junior year I was moved up to section leader, and now this year I'm the drum major. So I started in ninth grade on clarinet originally. I didn't really know what it was about, and then I just loved it, so I decided to get really involved. So what's the transition process from clarinet to drum major? Um, well, it was, ki was kind of tough. Like, I'm not used to being very firm, I think, because as a clarinet teacher, I, I mean, as a clarinet, like, player I can just kind of hide in the back and but it's really hard to do that as drum major you have to always be kind of like on and ready to go so it was a big change. Well it looks like they're doing a pretty good job of it because they're you know the best marching band ever. <laughs> at least that's what that's what they said at the Your many wins I have quote, definitely best proved marching it. Band ever. Well thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Thanks we really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Even if a signal indicates it's safe to walk it's never safe unless drivers see you. Last year, 113 pedestrians were injured in Santa Monica. You don't have to go to extremes to get a driver's attention. It just takes a little eye contact. Take the right steps to be safe. Watch the road.
The arts are a huge part of student life here at Samo High. The best artists in the school recently held a Day of the Dead exhibit at the Roberts Art Gallery. The exhibit featured paintings, sketches, and sculptures inspired by the holiday. Let's take a look. I enjoy it every year. I enjoy the whole thing. I love all the color. I love all the people. I wasn't sure what to expect. I just knew it was about the Day of the Dead. And I come in here and I see these like food but adorable and creative little skeletons by second graders. And I'm just thrilled to see that our future generations have the capacity for art. Love it. It's really interesting. A lot of people, you know, out there showing off what they got. It's fun. There's like an altar and there's various kinds of art. It's really interesting. Everything we do in our lives is connected with art and culture. And here's a good display of it, art and culture. And if we, if we took everything away and we cut all the programs like a lot of people do and a lot of political groups want to do, we would be really uh, taking a lot of that art and culture away from people. I just think it's interesting because not that many people are like, well, not a lot of artists get their work displayed in a gallery. You know what I mean? And I think that's something that's really special. Every spring, the English class, California Literature, takes a trip across California to visit some of the locations featured in the books they've read throughout the year. Fundraising for the trip has already started for the 2014 trip. Here to talk to us about that trip and the fundraising process is Cowlett teacher Jenna Gasparino and Lily Speakman. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Hi, thanks, for thanks guys. No problem. So, um, first of all, uh, tell us a bit about the Cowlett class. What kind of books do you read? What's the curriculum like? So the Calic class um, is a senior English class, a senior elective, and um, the students read uh, all books that are either about California or set in California, all by California authors. And a lot of Steinbeck, naturally, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So we read three Steinbeck texts, and then we also read um, Under the Feet of Jesus by Helena Viramontes. We read uh, Tortilla Curtain by T.C. Boyle. Um, we also do an uh, outside reading uh, that's specific about Los Angeles and specific Los Angeles authors. Um, and then we finish the year with a, a beat generation, uh, Jack Kerouac, and looking at all the beat writers in the San Francisco Renaissance. Great. That's pretty cool. Do you have a personal favorite on that list? Um, book or author? <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us both. I, guess, <laughs> I mean, Steinbeck, of course, um, but right. It kind of depends on what I'm teaching. Right now I'm teaching Under the Feet of Jesus, and I definitely love Helena Vermontes in that feminist perspective. Yeah. So um, you're, you are an assisting with the fundraising process. Yes, right? yes. Right. I took Jenna's class. I graduated in 2009, mm -hmm. and um, I was her second, her second year teaching the class. I was in the class, and I fell in love, and we became close. <laughs> you know, she has my brother and my sister. <laughs> so she called me in this year, um, since I just graduated college, to help her assist you know, the trip process and hotels and all that sort of stuff because she has a lot on her plate right now. Mm. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. So where, where do you guys uh, go? And on this so trip? So our final destination is Monterey, but um, we take a lot of stops along the way. So even though the students do get to visit a lot of the places that they read about, um, we make a lot of stops to places that are connected to the themes from the class. So for example, um, the first stop is in Oxnard at a local strawberry farm. And in the book Under the Feet of Jesus, we're talking a lot about where our food comes from and the migrant worker working experience. And so students get to actually go out into the field and talk to those farmers and talk about you know what kind of farming methods they use. Um, so we make several stops along the way. So even though Monterey is our final stop, we we have all of these these different spot, spots where we where we where we take a break, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> living in LA in the Santa Monica region, you can come really, really like tied into this world. Do you think that your students usually learn something new about California oh, that they sure. never knew before? Definitely. Yeah, and maybe Absolutely. Lily can speak to that. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in Santa Monica. Um, so it's a bunch of city life and a lot of people. So when you get out of town and really experience Monterey and Salinas, it's 
such a different experience. It's such a quiet little town and, you know, it's so crazy to read these books and think, like, that can't be real. <laughs> and then go there. Go to Monterey, which is such a small little beach town. It's so cute. And people are so nice there. And they want to talk to you. And it's so different than, you know, a typical, like, downtown L.A. or something. So we definitely take a lot out of the class. And a lot of the students on the trip um, who go on the trip, they've never been outside of Los Angeles before. Yeah. So for them, this is their first experience to really see what it's like outside of L.A. Yeah. So... How, how does the fundraising process work? I was work, gonna say, right? that's when the fundraising <laughs> comes yeah. into play. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty ambitious trip. <laughs> yeah. The overall cost of the trip is around sixty to $65,000. So a lot of students can afford the cost um, for their individual trip, but um, the way that the class is set up, I wanted the class to be reflective of the Samo High environment and the Los Angeles environment and the state of California so that kids could actually see their environment reflected in the, the literature that they're reading and vice versa. So um, when my former colleague and I designed the trip, we decided we would never exclude kids from the trip because of financial needs. So therefore, um, we have fun, a big fundraiser every spring. Um, we also have a lot of people from the community who end up making donations. Um, so it, it usually ends up, we make about eight to $10,000 every year um, to support the kids who, who can't otherwise afford the trip. And so how might people donate, send in money? So they can send a check to Samuel High. <laughs> <laughs> um, they can definitely send a check to Samuel High, and if they put Cal Lit in the memo of the check, then it will definitely come straight to us. Or they can participate in the fundraising event yeah. that Lily's going to help organize in the spring. Yeah, we're definitely trying to get, you know, parent involvement, student involvement is a big thing to show the students, like, want to be there and want to go. So right now we're trying to get in the groove of figuring out what our big fundraiser is going to be. Uh -huh. um, so we're excited to get that rolling and trying to see what great idea we have this year for our fundraiser. What has it been in the past? We've had anything from silent auctions um, to you know, parties, people's houses with different events. You know, it's kind of nothing continuously solid. Every, every year it's sort of different. It also depends on the need every year. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this year we figured out we have between eight to $10,000, so we need something pretty big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any great ideas, let us know, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, if you guys are thinking about donating, it's a great cause. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Yeah, uh, thanks. Really thank appreciate yeah. it. And, uh, we'll be right back. Some problems are just too big to ignore. But don't take matters in your own hands. With the help of a mediator, you can find a solution. Mediators are volunteer professionals who can help you resolve issues without the high cost of legal fees. Why are you single? Hey, I saw him first. Call us or reach out on the web if you'd like to volunteer or donate. Every year, Running With Speakers puts on a special Halloween costume contest outside of Barnum Hall. This year was the fifth annual event, and it was one of the best. Let's take a look. Come on down! Who's the scariest monster out there? Like we're about to start the Halloween co costume contest. I hope you're ready. I am. All right. First up, we have Les Grossman.
We'd now like to welcome Jordan Velasquez of Running With Speakers. Hey, Jordan. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the program. So, uh, what exactly is Running With Speakers? Uh, Running With Speakers is an organization that deals with any visual or audio aspect of an event in the uh, school campus. Um, we set up the speakers, the soundboard, or uh, projector sometimes. And it's, yeah, mm -hmm. sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. But uh, if you don't have anything more to say, that's good, that's good. I was just going to say that that does sound like a lot of work. I mean, how much time do you put into this club? Um, during these events, it varies, depends on what we're doing. Um, sometimes we work the halftime game, where we actually have to set up before the game even starts. So we're there from 5 and we finish at 9. So it or we can also work the PTSA meeting, which is only like an hour or so. Mm. So it depends. And besides meetings and games, you also have the annual Halloween competition. How did it go this year? It went very well. We had a uh, uh, great uh, MC. We had the stage, the great decoration, and we even had a, a smoke machine. Was there any costume that you were particularly partial to? Uh, my own. <laughs> Your own. I was um, Les Grossman from Tropic Thunder. Nice. Pretty funny. Remind me, which which character is that one again? That was uh, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise played play him, yeah. I used to watch He was the very vulgar one. He's always cursing. <laughs> and he had the very hairy arms, hairy chest, and he was bald. Oh, so did you uh, put yes, some hair yes. implants up? I in believe there? it is in that film. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, a smoke machine. Yes. Isn't that... I mean, I always thought those were like really dangerous. I, or how, how do you like manage all of this? Um, it was, uh, the liquid they used wasn't like very, um, I personally didn't work with that. We actually got help from the uh, theater department, which was uh, Mr. McCrum. He allowed us to use the smoke machine and he said that the liquid isn't very dangerous. It's not like, it uh, doesn't have a lot of chemicals in it. It has very few chemicals in it. Right. Is there anything you guys are hoping to do for the next Halloween contest? Um, honestly, this is my last year. I'm a senior, oh, okay. so I just hope they make it much better than what we did. So. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the show. No um, problem. And no problem at all. Just, uh, I guess, one last question. Is, is there, what, what do you think has been your favorite part of running with, with speakers? Um, I, th I think it's just the whole experience. I just like being um, backstage behind these, these events. Um, we actually have a few people run, um, working this event right now, and it's, I think it's just very cool to see how everything works behind the scenes. Well, from behind the scenes, this is Jordan Vasquez. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show, Jordan. We'll be right back. Welcome to our home away from home. Action! When I came here, I discovered I could write. I found the confidence to share my poetry, and now they're songs. I got away from the trouble in my neighborhood. Come check us out. At the Pico Youth and Family Center. Join us. Or volunteer. Together, we can change our world. That's a wrap. We'd now like to welcome, from the Samuel High Choir, Junior Harry Goboa. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, uh, Harry, uh, what choir are you in? I'm in chorale. So, essentially how the choir pyramid works is there's women's chorus and men's chorus at the beginner level. And there's chorale, and then there's magicals, and there's women's chamber at the top. So I'm kind of in the middle range. All right. So what, what yeah. part do you sing? Uh, I sing tenor. Nice. I'm a tenor. Tenor. Tenor man. That's a, that's a, that's a good part. Yeah. And how did you get involved with choir? Um, I'd actually been singing for about a year and a half before. This is my first year in choir. Mm. So I just joined, and uh, I have a band with my friends, like a rock band. Um, and I just, it's become kind of increasingly clear to me that music is what I want to do with my life. So it's kind of like a dream to have it in school also. Right. So that was really nice. So I <laughs> talked to Mr. Holes and uh, he put me in chorale and that's how it went. But you're, you're not singing rock tunes in choir, are you? No, <laughs> only in my head. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of songs do you sing? Um, we sing, it's actually kind of a mixture. We've, our first concert was a lot of uh, popular songs. We sang Some Nights by Fun. Um, and we sang um, Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson, the Pitch Perfect version, which was fun. <laughs> and recently we've been doing uh, a lot of classical pieces in Latin and in Greek. Um, yeah, so it's a variety, which is really nice. And I imagine that Kelly Clarkson doesn't necessarily have the biggest influence on your rock band, but I may be wrong. <laughs> I mean, what kind of stuff does your band do? Um, yeah, I mean, my band is uh, kind of bluesy, punky. 
stuff, so not exactly choir stuff, which is nice. I think it's uh, it's really nice to have it be a separate choir in the band. So what do you think that each experience adds to the other? I mean, does choir make the band experience more enriching or vice versa? I think definitely. Um, choir definitely helps me be more in tune because of kind of, when I first started with the band, without being in choir, it was kind of hard to have all the, you know, the theory behind it and all the notes kind of in my head already without that choir experience. So I think it's really helping me with all the technique and all the uh, breathing and everything. So it's good. Um, good. He sings blues, he sings Latin, he sings everything. It's Harry Galboa. We'll be right back. Hey, slow down! Right next to the library on 7th Street is the Santa Monica History Museum, where history comes to life <laughs> for the entire family. Enjoy the exhibits, main gallery, the photo archive, research gallery, and much more. Come visit the Santa Monica History Museum, keeping history alive. Today we are so fortunate to have Crystal Williams, Secretary of the Black Student Union at Samo High. So Crystal, can you tell us a little bit about what BSU is? Well, BSU is an organization for African American students at Santa Monica High and the purpose behind it is to bring together the black students and to you know have support and to interact with the school. How did, how did it start? I mean did it get going recently or has it kind of been a long stretch thing. Do you mean like the Black Student Union like the first like when it started or when it started at Santa Monica High? I guess either. Um. Okay well it started in the 60s or 70s one of the two <laughs> and um, it started because at that time black people couldn't really voice their opinion and they kind of felt like if all of us stick together and all of us voice our opinion, then they will hear us because you'll hear a hundred people compared to one person. Mm -hmm. And how do you think that, um, you know, I mean, obviously times have changed, mm -hmm. but yet there's still a lot of, you know, there's a lot of racial tension and issues at Samo High. How do you think that that original mission has changed over time or, or has it m remained kind of the same? Um, I mean, what kind, of, what kind of things do you, what, what are some like tangible things that you guys do around campus, right? I mean, were you involved with the, with the, uh, the uh, what is it, the black Village Nation? Is that what it is? The Black Forum, or the- that, The Black Forum, right? Um, well, personally, I mean, I had a close relationship with Dr. Now, and the Black Forum is actually part of the African American Mentor Soci Leadership Society and BSU and that is like totally different. They have like the same purpose, but just totally two different organizations. But um, yeah, I was part of that. And you know, the purpose about that is you watch TV nowadays and you see African-Americans kind of acting a fool, you know, mm -hmm. and exposing themselves in a degrading way. And that somewhat reflects us, you know, our generation and when there's fighting at school, the first thing you say, oh, it's reality TV that influences them. And so the Black Forum comes together to, like, why don't we talk it out? Like, where did it all start? Like, where did it originate? And Village Nation, that was about why do we call, you know, us black women bees and hoes? And where did that come from? And it didn't start with black men calling black women bees and hoes. It was... It started back in Europe during slavery, so yeah. So I mean, that's that seems like a you know quite a like a really dedicated mission. How did you really start getting involved with the Black Student Union? Um, I was watching this documentary honestly about the Black Student Union, and it was like in the '80s, and it seems like everybody who's super iconic that's like african-american in society nowadays like they're like oh i'm part of the naacp or i was part of the black student union at my school and it's kind of i want to be at that status one day i want to be the barack obama one day so you got to take baby steps <laughs> to, get to that status or that title of life yeah, and i heard as far as you know 
setting up your name in, in the whole kind of game. You're, you're, it's not only Black Student Union for you, right? Don't you also have your own documentary, documentary coming out? right, yeah. Yes, yes I do. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Um, well, it's about the perception, kind of, of like how we see one another. And it still has to do with like black people, but it has to do with America, in my point of view, because, you know, this year, you're, I'm a senior and I'm applying to college and I'm a black girl from Los Angeles and I have a brother and I have a mother and a father and they had joint custody with me. So if I'm applying to New York, I bet there's probably 50 other girls with that story. So what makes me so unique? My personal statement? Technically not because somebody could write the same thing that I wrote. So this documentary is kind of the perception of how I feel. So it's either going to be called Crystallism or Life in a Crystal Ball. <laughs> we haven't finalized that. And, I mean, all of us here are hoping for an offshoot TV show, but we'll leave that up to uh, the others. So, um, you're, but not you're, as raw well, as I mean, that we'll reality see. We'll TV. We'll see where it takes us. I'll, yeah. I'll definitely, if, if I can do anything to facilitate that, I would love to see that program. So um, <laughs> your, your, your big event, right, with the Black Student Union is uh, Apollo Night, right? Right. So what, do you guys, what are the steps you guys take to organize that? And how does well, that we're in the process right now. Some people think that, you know, the Black Student Union just like all of a sudden, like in February, like, let's scramble together, <laughs> let's just get it to go, you know, and have Apollo night. But it's starting now, like it started the first day in the meeting, like we elected who's who, you know, the secretary, the vice president, the parliament, you know, et cetera, et cetera, the list goes on. And then we like jumped on it and basically you have to start planning now because something about black student union is it's apollo night took it back to the to like the 60s kind of when the apollo theater was kind of first like out there and it's not just for the black acts at santa monica high it's for everybody and we want everybody to you know audition because santa monica is diverse and Although we are just this minority group, we want to reach out to other groups and all different shades, you know, whether if you're pink or purple, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You can audition for Apollo Night. Although if you are pink or purple, you should probably get that checked out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So what kind of acts do you usually have? Um, we have anything from singing, dancing, poetry, um, acting, instruments, whatever you do, any talents, you know? You can be jumping out the sky, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we'll put you on. Have you ever performed? Um, no, personally, I like leave that for, I don't know, personally, like I'm, I'm not gonna perform. You like, can view <laughs> the documentary though. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, guess you're more for behind the camera? Yeah. Or just cameras, generally? Um, I no, I just, it's just not my thing, kind of. No. I mean, I, I do my little performance, but it's not something for me like to, you know, since yeah. I'm part of the organization and then yeah. like, I'm up there like, <laughs> what you, like what are you doing kind of, so yeah. Yeah, well, um, everyone's welcome at Apollo Night, so get in contact with the Black Student Union. Uh, Crystal Williams, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, and we're pleasure. looking forward to looking into the crystal ball and wherever <laughs> it takes it in the media forms. Anyway, <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey mom, yes I'm home, save you some dinner. Plan now for a major earthquake. Contact the Santa Monica Office of Emergency Management. Don't be caught in the dark. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Samo Highlights this week. Again, I'm Natasha Munasinga. And I'm Max Gumbel. See you next time. <laughs>